The NHL draft is just six weeks away now, so things are starting to get a bit down to the wire, and I haven't released any rankings publicly yet, but today we're going to change that. Today I'll go over my top 32, but I'll be sure to release my final top 128 rankings before the draft, so be sure to subscribe with notifications on to make sure you don't miss that video. In case you're new here, my name is Graham, I'm a North American crossover scout for Dauber Prospects. All that being said, let's get into today's rankings. For the sake of time, I'm going to put 17 to 32 on screen now so you can pause the video to get a good look at them, but I won't really be talking about these guys today. I'll be sure to talk in depth about everyone in at least my first round in my final rankings. Honestly, Jaeger is a guy that I look at and I'm already pretty sure he's going to end up lower in my final rankings. He is a very good finisher though, armed with one of the better shots in the draft. I wouldn't call it elite or anything, but it's good enough to earn him a spot in the first round. His shot could take him a decent way, but the rest of the game isn't quite there for him yet. The finishing ability makes him an intriguing prospect for a team that's already close to the playoffs, but he is very raw. Probably one of the longer term projects for players in this range. Guliyaev is an undersized, offensively minded defenseman. Good acceleration combined with a high top speed allows him to navigate the neutral zone with ease. He changes speed quickly to catch opponents flat footed. A lot of his offense comes on the power play and a lot of it is rather simple but he is capable of making more complicated plays. He also has a rather strong one timer. There aren't many defensemen with a lot of upside in this draft so there isn't really that much competition but he has one of the highest ceilings among defensemen in this class. He makes a pretty good stretch pass, but I would like to see him attempt to carry the puck up the ice given his skating abilities. I would like to see him be more creative on the power play as well. I'm not the biggest fan of Barlow as a lot of people do have him ranked in the top 10, but I still like him quite a lot. On the power play, he reminds me a bit of Chris Kreider, not necessarily as a tip reflection machine, but just as a solid net front guy that always seems to find just enough open space in front of the net to make a play. He's a gritty, gritty physical forechecker when he's engaged and he can get under the skin of opponents while staying out of the penalty box. One of the best pure goal scorers in the draft with strong shooting mechanics and off puck positioning doing a lot of the work. He wasn't really much of a standout at either the Hlinka Gretzky Cup or the U18s, but he did have a critical goal in the bronze medal game for Team Canada. Unlike other pure finishers in this draft, his game is relatively well-rounded, but I would like to see the hard work and tenacity that he brings to the offensive zone translate more to his play in the defensive zone as well. He also strikes me as the kind of guy that could step up his game in the playoffs as he already plays with an edge. Height needs to get stronger on his feet. He is falling down way too much, even under minor pressure. He also isn't great in his own zone. He did play in a top penalty kill role this season for Prince George, but he was generally relatively passive on defense, both on the penalty kill and at even strength. That being said, Height is one of the better playmakers in the draft. He creates dangerous chances at a high volume. His best pass is only rivaled by that of Zach Benson, at least among forwards, but he doesn't pass that well as consistently as Benson does. His shot is pretty average from what I've seen, but Height is a guy I really want to watch more of before I can really nail down where I want him on my board. Right now he's at 13 because the upside is particularly high, but I do have some reservations with him, namely his defensive play, but also I'm not quite sure I've seen the player he can be. It feels like he has more to give and there are a lot of players I have currently ranked below him that are potentially more intriguing options. Danielson's counting stats may not scream top 15 pick, but he was on a really bad Brandon Wheat Kings team this year that only had four players crack the 40 point mark. He led the team in scoring with 78 points in 68 games. His upside may not be as high as some of the other players in this range, but he's a center with size who can move the puck. 
He's an above average skater, which helps his transition game, but what really makes him stand out is his playmaking. He is very patient with the puck on a stick, and he's very good at finding dangerous passing lanes. A lack of talent around him means that a lot of those chances didn't go in the back of the net this season, but it's hard to fault Danielson himself for that. His shooting mechanics aren't great, as he has a bit of a sweeping motion in his wrist shot with little deception or quickness in his release for most shots. That being said, his game should translate to higher levels of hockey relatively easily as he is a strong skater with solid puck protection and positioning. For that reason, I see him as a bit of a safe pick, but still with a reasonably high upside. Crystal is a very creative and intense playmaker. Very high ability to read the ice, particularly in the offensive zone. This allows him to anticipate plays faster than almost anyone else on the ice, making him a great playmaker. He is a bit undersized and his skating isn't very efficient. He will likely need to bulk up to be effective at the NHL level, which is the only reason I have him as low as I do. He reminds me a bit of a playmaking version of Jason Robertson in that they are both highly skilled but poor skaters. The big difference between them is size, so perhaps Robertson's teammate. Joe Pavelski would be a better comparison, but stylistically, they aren't very similar players. Either way, I believe part of the reason for Robertson's success despite his poor skating is his size and overall durability. This is something that concerns me with Crystal, as some of the moves he tries to pull off at the WHL level would get him obliterated in the NHL. I would have him higher based purely on his skill level, but he does come with more risk than most players in this range. Remember when Eric Carlson was drafted 15th overall? Pepperidge Farm remembers. In 10 years, people may very well be talking about how Sandine Pelica, or Sandy Pelican, fell to 15th overall. Maybe even later, who knows? Speaking of Eric Carlson, man, this kid has shades of him in his play. The way he can move around the ice and rip the puck is very reminiscent of Carlson at times, and I'm a Sharks fan, so I saw plenty of EK65 this year. Unlike Carlson, Sandine Pelica isn't a liability on defense. He actually battles and uses great anticipation to make well-timed moves to disrupt plays in his defensive zone. Also willing to battle in front of his own net, and despite his size, he has some snarls in his game. He strikes me as the kind of guy who will show up big time in the playoffs. I could also easily see him being a captain in the NHL. He plays with so much passion and determination, and he shows up big time in big moments. He looks like a leader on the ice. It's a shame he only got into two playoff games with his J20 club and none at the SHL level this year. He's coming off a U18 World Juniors where he put up 11 points in 7 games, including 5 points in an 8-0 route with Team Canada, in which he was also a plus 5, and on the ice for 7 of Sweden's 8 goals. Not bad. Simashev is my top-ranked defenseman, just edging out Sandin Pelika because of his dominant transition play, defensive impact, and ability as a puck carrier. If anything, I see him moving up my board, but no higher than 7th or 8th. He was at 11 when I started this script, so he's already moving up. He's elite in transition, extremely effective in shutting down opposing rushes in the neutral zone. He forces dump-ins or creates turnovers at his blue line very often. He's also a plus skater on a 6'4 frame. That and above average stick handling makes him a force in transition with the puck on his stick. Have I mentioned he's good in transition yet? Involvement rate as a puck carrier could be higher given his skill level, but I'm not particularly worried about that. His playmaking ability may be a bit limited by his tendency to make safe and simple plays. He's also somewhat hesitant to use his shot, though it may only be average at best. Overall, he's an extremely smart player who is very effective defensively, particularly in keeping the puck out of his own zone in the first place. I believe his offensive ceiling is higher than the points would suggest as well. Could become one of the better top four two-way defensemen in the league. Leonard's best skill is his shot. He's a sniper. Strong off puck positioning in the offensive zone means he's often in the right place at the right time to use it. He might be the least exciting of the three players on his line with the US development team, but we'll get to why that is in another video. 
The thing that worries me the most with him is his skating. At 5'11", 181 pounds, he isn't exactly the largest player on the ice, but he doesn't quite have the speed that I think could really take his game to another level. His strong off-puck positioning in the offensive zone goes a long way in making up for this. This makes him more effective on the power play in and in zone offense in general, but less effective on the rush than one might expect given his overall skill level and point totals. He does attempt power forward style net drives on the rush, and while he protects the puck well, his lack of separation speed in these instances means he's often settling for less ideal outcomes. He's also pretty strong on the forecheck, often working with his teammates to create turnovers. These skills should translate to the NHL relatively easily, so I think he has a reasonable floor as a top 6 goal scoring winger. If he does add another gear and a bit more muscle, I could see him being a regular 30 goal scorer on a top line role. He is listed as a center on elite prospects, but I don't think he will play center in the NHL. He does, however, provide a solid physical net front presence that one might expect more from a center than from a winger. Oliver Moore is one of the more fun players in this entire class to watch. His game is built on speed. He is speed. His acceleration and top speed are both very impressive, especially since he's always putting in maximum effort. Have I mentioned his speed yet? Additionally, he never seems to run out of gas. This alone makes him an interesting prospect, but when you add on the fact that he's a center, he's defensively responsible, he has very strong hands and a plus shot, and you've got yourself one hell of a hockey player. One NHL comparison that instantly comes to mind is Rupe Hintz. He doesn't have Hintz's size, and the shot might not be quite as good, but it's pretty close. I try to be careful when making general comparisons to NHL players because I don't want fans to be disappointed when their prospect doesn't become the next McDavid, but I really believe in more and I think the hint comparison is fair. This is a player that could easily go top 3 in a lot of drafts. His speed and skill are so obvious it's hard to imagine him doing anything other than centering a first or second line in the NHL in a couple of years time. His, comp his compete level is very impressive as well, and he seems like the kind of player that NHL coaches are going to love to coach. A similar-ish player to Crystal, Crystal's shot is perhaps slightly better and he uses it more consistently, but Benson is the better playmaker, which is no shot at Crystal. Benson is just an elite playmaker, probably the best in the class among all skaters. I would even put him ahead of Connor Bedard in terms of playmaking ability, although that isn't really something Bedard is known for. While Bedard generates a lot of assists through getting pucks on net and high level of traditional playmaking, Benson's vision and execution of difficult passes is simply unparalleled in this draft, and I have him at 6. That's truly a testament to how strong the top 10 of this draft is. Also like Crystal, Benson is an average skater at best and is undersized. He is, however, quite tenacious with a nose for the puck. He is an overall well-rounded player who never takes a shift off and is effective in all three zones. I love his work ethic. One of the few undersized skill guys that I can see working out in a top 6 or bottom 6 role. I would personally look for Benson to fall to the 8-12 to 12 range due to his size, but that team would be getting a steal. Also look for Crystal to fall for the same reason, but he could potentially fall as far as the second round as there doesn't seem to be as much hype around him. Smith is a tremendous hockey player. I'm a big fan of Zach Benson, but there's a pretty big step up from 6 to 5 here in my opinion. Great vision, stick handling, and passing make him a lethal playmaker, and yet he still scored 51 goals for the US development team this year. He generates tons of odd man rushes with takeaways in the neutral zone, while also positioning himself to benefit from takeaways his line mates create. He's simply a dominant player offensively. Yes, it helps to have line mates like Gabe Perot and Ryan Leonard, but it's hard to argue with his on-ice performance. At the time of writing this, I haven't had a chance to watch his U18 games yet, but he just recorded 20 points in 7 games at that tournament and was an easy tournament MVP winner. He's particularly effective on the power play, finding ways to get pucks from dot to dot consistently. 
My only real complaints with him are that his defensive impact isn't very good, he seems to coast on his skill at times, and he passes too much. Despite his strong playmaking ability, his shot is quite strong and I like to see him use it a bit more. He's the kind of player that can drive a line, quite possibly a top line at the NHL level. He makes his teammates better by drawing attention to himself and capitalizing on dangerous passing lanes he creates. We currently have him ranked at 7 at Dauber, but I don't think it'll be particularly hard to convince my colleagues to bump him up a couple spots for our final board. Leo Carlson is going to be a captain for an NHL team one day. He plays a very mature game and looks like a poised veteran in the SHL, arguably the second best league in the world. The main difference between scouting on video and in person is with video you don't have the ability to ask player questions, but you can tell just by the way he plays on the ice that he is a natural leader. Another player to put up historic production in a European Pro League as a first time draft eligible this season. 25 points in 44 SHL games and 9 points in 13 playoff games to cap off the season. He already has 92 games of pro experience in the SHL which is extremely impressive for an 18 year old and he's close to being a finished product already. Not to say he won't continue to get better but he is NHL ready. He pressures the puck carrier in the defensive zone aggressively but smartly. Chips in to protect his blue line as well. He's a hard worker, very smart, skates very well, and uses his size to his advantage. The way he scores is very translatable to the NHL, and the upside is huge. I can see a world where Carlson becomes the next Mark Stone or John Tavares. So to summarize, he's big, strong, and he can do this. Michkov is a defensive liability. He regularly floats around the defensive zone waiting for breakout passes to come to him. That's the biggest downside with this player. There are others, but that's the largest one. He also happens to be the most prolific scorer as a draft eligible player in the KHL since Alex Ovechkin. Strong puck handling, good vision, strong passing, and a lethal shot round out his offensive toolkit. He's a strong force in transition. He prefers to carry the puck himself and he creates a lot of controlled offensive zone entries as a result. He also has a strong delay game as he is often ahead of his teammates when entering the offensive zone. This stems from his tendency to play very high in the defensive zone. He's very good from behind the goal line and yes, he did score in Michigan this year. He's also extremely confident with the puck on his stick. He got off to a slow start this season, but once he was traded to Sochi, he looked a lot more comfortable and didn't look out of place playing in a league that is generally considered to be the second best in the world. Not only did he not look out of place on that club, but he was arguably their best player to close out the season. He made significant improvements throughout the season, summed up by that strong finish with Sochi. Fantilli would go first overall in a lot of drafts. He forms the second half of the best and certainly most hyped 1-2 since McDavid Eichel in 2015. I think the comparison is especially relevant as the gap between these two players is somewhat similar to the gap between McDavid and Eichel in my opinion, but I still think very highly of this kid. If Connor Bedard is the next McDavid, then who knows, maybe Fantilli could even be the next Sidney Crosby. Or maybe he's the next Adam Fantilli. <laughs> Everything about his game is good. He's big, he skates well, he can be physical and gritty, he has a plus wrister and an elite one-timer. His playmaking is very strong, but he does tend to make plays more from the outside. I would like to see him attack the middle of the ice more, especially with his passes. His transition involvement is kind of average. He can sometimes get a little too heated and he does take undisciplined penalties. But if those are my biggest concerns, you know this kid is going to be good. Getting a second overall pick would have been a major win for every team in the league this year, except Anaheim since they technically moved down. Like Carlson, he is ready to play in the NHL, but that doesn't necessarily mean he will.
While I'm pretty certain you've already heard many of the names on this list, and you've almost certainly heard the name Adam Fantilli or Matt Michikov, if there's one name I can say with 100% certainty every viewer of this video will have heard beforehand, it is Connor Bedard. That's just about the only thing I could think of to say about this kid that hasn't already been said. He is the most dominant Canadian Hockey League player since Connor McDavid. He very nearly carried a very bad Regina Pats team through the first round of the WHL playoffs, scoring 10 goals and 20 points in the seven game series. He scored 23 points in seven games at the World Juniors in the regular season. He scored 71 goals and 72 assists for 143 points in 57 games in the WHL. Earlier in the season, I made a video discussing how he was on pace for 100 goals, which was admittedly a bit clickbaity, and I didn't think there was any way he would actually happen. He would actually score that many goals, but he actually got very close. Across 71 total games played this season, he recorded 90 goals. 9-0. I am somewhat surprised every time he takes a shift and he doesn't at least record a point. Elite skating, elite pace, elite sick handling, and an elite shot make up the core of his game. Sure, he's not great defensively, and he will probably struggle to be effective against NHL players defensively early in his career, but even as a rookie, I expect him to score around a point per game, which should more or less make up for it. He also is clearly pretty good at scoring goals, so don't be surprised if he scores 40 goals as a rookie, assuming he plays the full season and he's healthy. He's the kind of player that can single-handedly change the short-term fate of a franchise with a little bit of luck and really good goaltending to support him. Well, that's about it for these rankings. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. I'd really like to hear you guys' feedback on this one. If you enjoyed it, please do consider giving it a like, and if you're new around here and you want more NHL draft content, be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications so you never miss a video. Also, Dauber Prospects now has a YouTube channel as well. At the time I'm writing this, there's no content there yet, but there will be soon. If you want more draft content featuring myself and a bunch of people that are way smarter than me, I'll leave a link to that as a pinned comment below. That's all for this one. Thank you so much for watching.